When we talk about education technology, we tend to think about things like virtual reality or adaptive learning systems or things using artificial intelligence more generally. But I think low tech ed tech is massively underappreciated. And in this video, I'm going to discuss three main benefits that I see low tech products having over their high tech counterparts. One of the main benefits is reliability. High tech products tend to involve a lot of interacting parts, and it means there's more opportunities for something to go wrong. Okay, okay, uh, who's having trouble logging in? Raise, raise your hand if you're having trouble logging in. When I was in grade school, teachers would sometimes wheel in the TV and the VCR because they wanted to show a movie to the whole class. And pretty frequently, you know, when they went to put in that videotape, the uh, VCR would not turn on or it would come back out or there'd be static on the TV and the teacher would be forced to call, you know, an IT professional to come in and try to figure out what was going on. All that stuff just takes a lot of time and drains attention from the class. When you're using a technology that's reliable, you tend to use your class time a lot more efficiently. The second benefit is affordability. Low tech solutions tend to be more affordable by orders of magnitude. A single Oculus VR headset cost $319 at the time of this recording. For the same amount of money, you could buy 12,000 sheets of paper and 2,700 pencils. Obviously, these technologies serve different purposes, but it is astonishing how cheap, cheap things can be. When I bought this board game, which teaches students how to program, there are no subscription fees. There are no software updates, right? There's nothing to break here, really, so there's no need to call a professional in to come and fix it. The third benefit I see from low-tech products is adaptability. So this board game that I am talking about, it's built for middle schoolers to work in teams on programming challenges together. But my son is still too young for that, so we use it as a form of imaginative play. So there's ocean, there are ships, and we take tea to different parts of the world. Paper and pencil by themselves remain insanely flexible tools for developing ideas, for communicating, for collaborating, and for learning more generally. Now, I'm not saying that all low-tech products have these three key features, and there are no high-tech products that have them, but there does seem to be a correlation, or a trend at least, for low-tech products to have these features that I'm talking about. If you're using education technology in the classroom, or you're a parent using education technology to help teach your kids something, I would think first about how to use the technologies you already have more effectively before thinking about buying some fancy high-tech gadgetry. A lot of times you're better off with the old school tech. That's it for this video. If you like this video, you might be interested in my other video on the problem with STEM products. And if you have thoughts on low tech versus high tech solutions in the classroom or as a parent, let me know in the comments. All right, that's it everyone, peace.